Hello friends, this is Dr. Ranjini, Assistant Professor in Biotechnology. Welcome to e-learning platform. Today, we learn about structure and functions of peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are uh, membrane bound cell organelles they are actually involved in oxidation. They carry or they enclose many oxidases and they carry out oxidation reaction along with detoxification. All animal cells except erythrocytes and most plant cells contain peroxisomes. They are present in all photosynthetic cells of higher plants in coleoptiles and hypocotyl regions. Peroxisomes contain several oxidases. They are variable in size and shape but usually appear circular in cross section having diameter between 0.2 and 1.5 micrometer. They have a single limiting unit membrane of lipid and protein molecules which encloses their granular matrix. It's a membrane bound cell organelle. The membrane is rich or it is made up of lipid and it encloses, so encloses a protein molecules that will be there in the matrix region. So it is a membrane bound cell organelle having the many proteins which are absorbed or which are taken from the cytosol in the granular region or in the matrix region. Like mitochondria and chloroplast, they acquire their proteins by selective import from the cytosol. They take the proteins from the, the cytosol by selection. So they will selectively take up or import the proteins from the cytosol. Peroxisomes resemble the endoplasmic reticulum by being self-replicating. So these peroxisomes are self-replicating. They are formed from the pre-existing peroxisomes. And membrane enclosed organelle that exists without a genome of its own. Mitochondria will find the, the mitochondrial DNA. But here peroxisome does not have the genome of its own. These peroxisome, they can adapt remarkably to changing conditions. That means their shape and the number changes. For example, yeast cells grow on sugar. When you grow the yeast cells on the sugar, they have small peroxisomes. But when some yeasts are grown on methanol, they develop large peroxisomes and oxidize methanol. So the here the media will affect the size of the, the peroxisome. On sugar the peroxisome size is small but when they were grown on the methanol they show the increased sized or large sized peroxisome to oxidize the methanol. When grown on fatty acid they develop large peroxisomes that break down fatty acids to acetyl-CoA by beta oxidation. When they are grown on the fatty acids, again the size of the peroxisome increases and they carry out beta oxidation and they convert these fatty acids into acetyl coin. Next is peroxisome structure. Peroxisomes are also important in plants. One type is present in leaves that is on the leaves you have the one group of peroxisome they carry out photorespiration photorespiration it's the process just reversal of the photosynthesis wherein in photosynthesis there is fixation of the carbon dioxide for the synthesis of the sugar but here in the presence of the same sunlight in the presence of the oxygen rubisco enzyme will be inhibited 
and instead of fixing the carbon dioxide for atmospheric carbon dioxide for the sugar synthesis there is utilization of the oxygen and the release of the useful atmospheric carbon dioxide to the environment or the carbon dioxide will be released whereas in photosynthesis there is fixation or utilization of carbon dioxide takes place but in case of the photorespiration the carbon dioxide will be released so such type of uh, uh, photorespiration carrying out peroxisomes are present on the leaves the other type of peroxisome is present in germinating seeds in germinating seeds you have the peroxisome their function is to convert the fatty acids which are stored in the seed lipids into sugars which are very needed for the growth of the young plant and this cycle or the process is called as glyoxylate cycle and the the group of peroxisomes are called as the glyoxisomes in the germinating seeds fats will be the lipids will be converted into sugars these sugars will be readily absorbed by the young seedlings or the the germinating seeds and this process is called as the glyoxylate cycle and the uh, peroxisome is called as glyoxisomes the glyoxylate cycle does not occur in animal cells it is present only in the germinating seeds to provide the nutrition for the germinating embryo chemical composition internally peroxisomes contain several oxidases like catalases and urate oxidases these enzymes use molecular oxygen to oxidize organic substances various organic substances will be oxidized by utilizing the oxygen in the presence of these enzyme and during this process when they remove the r group from the organic substances there is formation of the h2o2 so they are using the oxygen to oxidize the organic substances they remove the r group and then h2 O2 will be formed. H2O2 is nothing but the hydrogen peroxide. It's a very corrosive substance. It's a very corrosive substance. So this has to be removed. This has to be detoxified. That detoxification activity will be done by the enzyme which is enclosed in the peroxisome. That is catalase. Catalase is present in large amounts and degrades hydrogen peroxide to yield water and oxygen. H2O2 will be converted into H2O and oxygen. So, this corrosive substance will be converted into the water and oxygen. Peroxisomal proteins function as an import signal. They help in locating the pro proteins or they help in sending the protein to the particular site due to the presence of the signal protein. Formation of peroxisomes. Most peroxisomal membrane proteins are made in cytosol. They selectively absorb these proteins from the cytosol and then inserted into the membrane of pre-existing peroxisomes. Here the peroxisomes increases their size by absorbing these proteins which are there in the cytosol. Thus the new peroxisomes are thought to arise from pre-existing ones by organelle growth and fission these the the uh, peroxisomes absorb the proteins from the cytosol increases their size and then they undergo fission they, they will be divided to form the daughter peroxisomes so this is the picture which depicts how the peroxisomes are formed here the peroxisomes will absorb or they will take up the specific peroxisomal proteins it may be oxidases or it, it may be urate oxidase or the catalase or other proteins will be the uh, taken by the peroxisome and it will increase in its size after that they undergo fission they undergo fission and they results in the formation of the daughter peroxisomes or new peroxisomes 
Next is what are the functions which will be done by peroxisome? Hydrogen peroxide metabolism and detoxification. This is very important function that will be done by peroxisomes. These peroxisomes are called so oxisomes. They are called so because they usually contain one or more enzymes like uh, many enzymes like oxidases d -amine, amino acid oxidase and urate oxidase these oxidase enzyme their function is to oxidize the the organic substances organic substances will be oxidized in the presence of oxygen and r group will be removed and h2 will be combining with oxygen and results in the formation of h2o2 this is hydrogen peroxide when excess h2o2 accumulates in the cell the catalase enzyme it's a detoxifying enzyme converts this h2o2 to h2o h2o2 will be converted into water molecule and oxygen this type of oxidative reaction occurs in liver and kidney liver and kidney cells where peroxisomes detoxify <laughs> various toxic molecules and enter the the bloodstream so oxidative reaction converts this or the catalase will convert the h2o to corrosive molecule into detoxify or it will be detoxified to form the the h2o and oxygen so this reaction de detoxifying reaction in uh, animals will be observed in the liver and the kidney cells where peroxisome detoxify various toxic molecules and later the detoxified molecules will be entering the bloodstream next function uh, carried out by peroxisome is photorespiration in green leaves peroxisomes that carry out a process called photo respiration it is called photo respiration which is a light uh, uh, stimulated production of carbon dioxide as i told earlier instead of fixing the carbon dioxide for the synthesis of the sugar here there is a release of the carbon dioxide due to inhibition of the rubisco function by oxygen in the presence of sunlight that is different from the generation of carbon dioxide by mitochondria in the dark or in the absence of the sunlight in photorespiration glycolic acid two carbon product will be released from the chloroplast and this will be oxidized into glyoxylate this will be oxidized into glyoxylate and h2o2 and this h2o2 this will be formed glyoxylate and h2o2 will be formed by the oxidase another oxidase that is called as glycolic acid oxidase in photorespiration glycolic acid will be formed and that will be oxidized to glyoxylate and h2o2 by the enzyme glycolic acid oxidase later on glyoxylate is oxidized into carbon dioxide and formate so now the oxy oxygen is utilized and carbon dioxide is released and this process is called as photorespiration because there is consumption of oxygen and removal of the carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight and the source of carbon dioxide is glycolic acid later converted into glyoxylate and will be converted into carbon dioxide and fumarate so this carry out photorespiration next is fatty acid oxidation the major function in function in peroxisomes is the breakdown of the fatty acid molecules in mammalian cells beta oxidation occurs in both mitochondria and peroxisomes beta oxidation occurs in mitochondria and peroxisomes in yeast and plant cells 
this reaction occurs exclusively in peroxisomes in plants only peroxisomes carry out beta oxidation but in mammals both mitochondria and peroxisomes peroxisomal oxidation of fatty acid yields acetyl groups acetyl groups fatty acid will be converted into acetyl coa or acetyl group will be formed and it is not linked to atp formation there is no generation of energy instead the energy released during peroxisomal oxi oxidation is converted into heat and the acetyl groups are transported into cytosol where they are used in the synthesis of cholesterol and other metabolites peroxisomal oxidation in mammals takes place both in mitochondria and peroxisome but in plant only in peroxisome peroxisomal oxidation of fatty acid yield acetyl groups and is not linked to atp formation and where this energy will go the energy released during the peroxisomal oxidation is converted into heat and the acetyl groups are transported to cytosol where they are used in the synthesis of cholesterol and other metabolites this is regarding the peroxisome function in fatty acid oxidation next is very important that is formation of plasmalogens in animals peroxisomes catalyze the first reaction in the formation of the plasmalogens which are most abundant class of phospholipids in myelin myelin it is a insulating material around the nerve cells and this is made up of plasmalogens and these plasmalogens formation the first reaction in resulting the plasma plasmalogens is taking place is catalyzed by peroxisomes so deficiency of plasmalogens causes abnormalities in myelination of the nerve cells that is the insulating material insulating layer of the nerve cell which is one reason why many peroxisomal disorders lead to neurological diseases if the myelination insulation is not there then the degeneration of the nerve cells takes place and hence peroxisomes play an important role in the neurological disorders or the diseases so these plasmalogens are very important for the synthesis or the important component of the myelin when the plasmalogens are not formed properly the myelin uh, formation will be will be inhibited and hence it results in the degeneration of the nerve cells and then end, end up with the neurological implications i hope today you understood the structure chemical composition and functions of peroxisomes thank you